What's up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Big Fight Field channel, where we speak the truth, we be honest, we give our takes on AEW. It is Wednesday night, November seventeenth, two thousand and twenty-one. I am your I am your host, Joseph Conlon. We have the Fallout edition from Saturday's pay per view. AEW Full Gear, and we got Wesley Williams back on the channel tonight. He was not here for the Full Gear review, but we got him 100% back here tonight. Cameron Johnson will be back with us Friday night for Rampage. But, dude, how are you doing? Are you are you fully recovered from, from when you were sick on the weekend? And um, uh, what did you think of tonight? And also, really quick, what did you think of the pay-per-view? Yeah, man, I'm 100% recovered. That killer headache I had did not keep me down. I, I battled back, and I and I jobbed that motherfucker out. That's what I did. So, yeah, that, that headache is no more, man. I'm back, fully recovered. Can't wait to talk about AEW, man, and Full Gear. What an awesome experience it was. Despite me having the headache for that last half of uh, Full Gear on Saturday, I definitely enjoyed myself. Uh, All-around tremendous pay-per-view. Uh, I... I don't know if I'd rank it higher than All Out. I don't know, but I personally I don't think I, I would. I, I'd say they're kind of equal, though. In a, in a way, almost kind of equal. But it, it, regardless, AEW is delivering with tremendous programming, whether it's pay-per-views, whether it's the weekly shows. They are delivering each and every single week. And I just couldn't be happier as a professional wrestling fan, man. Now we are in the Hangman Page era and of, of uh, AEW with the with the world title, man, and I'm just super excited for it. And Dynamite tonight, tremendous show all around. I mean, a great Fallout show. We already got a bunch of new feuds set up, a bunch of new storylines set up, man. And uh, we're now on the road to Revolution uh, going into 2022 and going into the TBS era in the new year of 2022. So I cannot wait to see uh, how AEW finishes off the rest of 2021, what they have in store for us in the TBS era, man. It's going to be so much fun. I cannot wait talk about all of it hey just to let you guys know we have seven episodes of dynamite left on tnt i think that's pretty crazy so the tnt era of dynamite is coming to an end pretty soon and it's only seven more episodes but uh i thought tonight was a great show um i, I do like the new direction um that they're go that some of the directions they're going in i uh, my favorite part of the night, which we're probably going to talk about first, was the first 30 minutes of the show. I thought the first, the first 30 minutes of the show was absolutely amazing, and we're going to talk about it. And the rest of the show was pretty good. And um, yeah, we're going to talk about all here tonight. I thank you all for joining us here tonight for Dynamite Review. Before we get into the review for Dynamite tonight, really quickly... Um, if you have not already, be sure to go ahead and check out the AEW Full Gear review we did on Saturday night. We had um, we had 257 amazing people check out the review, so I greatly appreciate that. And the numbers are climbing every day, which means people are still going back and watching the review, and I absolutely appreciate that. From the bottom of my heart, it was a big pay-per-view. I was looking to get a uh, hopefully a big viewership for the review, and uh, I thought it did great with over 250 viewers. So again, I thank you all so much for that. And um, before we start, it was also today that uh, uh, today, November 17th, was the, uh, only 2021 was declared uh, National Cowboy Shit Day. I love it. <laughs> I, I freaking love it, dude. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, honestly, it should be NDA approved for sure. I mean, I it's probably not going to be NDA approved, but it really should. I mean, it's the best holiday all year round. Come on, let's face it. Oh, it's yeah. National Cowboy Shit Day. I mean, I mean, hell, we're going to be celebrating every day with Eggman Page being the new AEW World Champion. I mean, and not, not only November 17th, but every day going forward, as long as Page continues to uh, hold on to that AEW World title. And, uh, and I cannot wait to see the reign he has, man. And we're already off to a pretty tremendous start, if you ask me. Yeah, I, I believe so. Um, do you want to talk about it first? I mean, we had him coming out. The world title. He he looks fantastic with that championship. He really does. Wait, I th I almost forgot. That was not the first thing on, we saw on the show. The first thing we saw on the show 
it was a backstage segment with the elite Kenny Omega cut a promo. He's like, he congratulated Hangman being for real. And he's like, um, you know, I need to recuperate. There's stuff that's not going right. I need time away to fix my problems and my problems on on here. So um, he said something like, uh, you guys can carry the load or something like that while I'm gone. And and Adam Cole's like, oh, I, I he's like, cl- no cleaner, no problem. And then Cole and then Omega was like, um, I was actually talking to the Young Bucks. So that was a little tease that for Kenny's first feud when he possibly comes back is going to be Adam Cole. And I really like the way that they wrote Kenny Omega off television, short, simple. And to be perfectly honest, I, I tweeted this out later today when I heard the news that he was going to be taking a break for a very long time. Um, AEW's roster is so talented. It's got so much talent. It is absolutely loaded with all this young talent, with people like Sammy Guevara and people like Dante Martin, that if guys like Moxley... And guys like Kenny Omega have to go away for something. It's really not going to hurt AEW that much in the long run for however long they're out. Because they've got so much talent to cover up for that. So really, I think Kenny Omega being out for a long time is really not going to be an issue. What about you? Yeah, I, I think so too, man. I mean, AEW's has done, done such a great job of uh, building up all this young talent and building up all these new stars to where, you know, guys like Moxley and Omega with them being away, it's really not going to hurt the overall product. I think the ratings will still be, you know, looking very nice for AEW and people will still want to tune in uh, each and every single week. And and AEW's built up good trust and good faith with the, the pro wrestling community. And so it's like, you know, we, when we look at AEW, we know we can trust them on building up more more stars and building up even younger talent coming on in and it's amazing how much their roster is just bolstered ever since then it's uh aw's inception back in 2019 it's it's unbelievable um i want to give my 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 props to kenny omega man for one hell of a reign he had as aw world champion and uh if anybody deserves rest it's him uh the guy killed it for 346 days as aw world champion and he he did a lot of that while being hurt, while having all these injuries, and the fact that he still gave us so many match of the year candidates throughout this entire year, and, and as as AEW World Champion, man, with all those injuries, I mean, it goes to show you, man, why he is arguably the best wrestler in the world. You know, it's it's unbelievable. But I wish Kenny Omega uh, nothing but the best with uh, the surgery he has and with uh, all the recovery he's uh, he's going to be having uh, going forward. Um, and I cannot wait to see him back when he does eventually come back. But I did love that little tease at the beginning of Dynamite tonight with uh, Adam Cole and Kenny Omega. Possibly Omega, when he comes back, he could be kicked out of the elite. And Adam Cole could be, very well become the new leader. We'll have to see. But that was quite a tease. And uh, we can all you know brainstorm and fantasy book uh, what could happen going forward when Kenny Omega does make his return. But AEW's in good hands, man. They got so much talent, uh, both on the, in the men and women's divisions, that this company is going to be... Uh, a, a well-oiled machine going forward, and there's nothing to worry about. Uh, yeah, before we get into the stuff with Brian and, and uh, Hangman Page, I have to ask you a question. Um, did you see that YouTube video? Uh, it was this weekend. It was posted on Saturday when Omega was uh, with a chiropractor, and it was like... Uh, yeah, like, I, I, I saw like little clips of it. I didn't see the full bit. I think I saw like the link for the full video somewhere, but uh, I only saw little clips on Twitter. Yeah, I watched like half the video and like you could tell that the man's injured and he's like in pain because uh, he couldn't let like the, the chiropractor. Um, the, the chiropractor had a dumbbell, 40 pounds, and he said, can you lift this up with your shoulder? And Kenny Omega couldn't lift up the dumbbell with, his sh- with the with the dumbbell because of his shoulder problem. So, yeah, um, he's probably going to get surgery. And we'll see how long he's out for it. But we got Hangman Page as the new world champion. And uh, really not long into his uh, into his promo he was cutting, uh, he got interrupted by the new number one contender, Brian Danielson, 
and now uh yeah there you go the shirt um people had questions since brian won the uh the world title eliminator final against miro uh, on saturday that it's going to be face versus face and house is going to work house is going to make sense well i uh i'm pretty sure that uh they justified danielson as a heel in the in the first um 30 minutes of dynamite tonight with the segment he had with page and the match he had with Evil Uno, and even the promo he cut after the match. I really think that was the main focus, really, on tonight's show, was to establish Danielson as a heel in the feud with uh, Hangman Page, because uh, he, I think he, Danielson knew that, um, that he was not going to get cheered in a pro-Hangman crowd tonight, and really, in all crowds, uh, they're not going to cheer him over Hangman Page. So he knows what he's doing. He's such an incredible wrestler. He's smart. Um, this is literally goat shit right here, in my opinion. When he, he, he makes the crowd um, boo him out of the building because of how great of a, how great of a heel he can be. And how over of a babyface Hangman Page is. And with Danielson being a heel in the match, A, it's going to make the match much more interesting. And B, it's going to benefit Hangman Page when he eventually beats Danielson, retains the title, and gives Danielson his first loss in AEW. So I think all around, this is going to benefit everybody. It's going to benefit... Danielson, it's going to benefit Hangman Page uh, because it's it's just for the best. And the back and forth um, they had was great. Brian name dropped WrestleMania saying, I won the title at WrestleMania and the next night I defended the title or something like that. And he challenged Hangman tonight and Hangman would do it. But Danielson said that, you know, we can't do it tonight. Because I already have a match, and you're in some uh, shit leather jacket and in cowboy boots, so you're not ready. And uh, I just freaking love the fact that they had the brawl. They said that he said you need your little friends to break up our brawl or something like that. And then uh, yeah, we'll get to the match in a little bit with Evil Uno. But I thought the opening was great and. I love the fact how Brian is such a great professional that he could be such an over baby face and being a segment and being a program with Hangman Page, he knows exactly what he's doing and he can have the crowd turn on him like that. I think it's incredible. Yeah, I, I, this was a phenomenal segment to open up Dynamite. I mean, they already in just those first 30 minutes, they set up, you know, what is going to be a, a tremendous back and forth battle between uh, Hangman Page and Brian Nielsen and you know, like you said, Joseph, I mean, face versus face, how would it work? Well, Danielson, uh, being the professional that he is and the veteran uh, that he is, he he's able to have a crowd turn on him just like that. And we got uh, Danielson uh, showing his heel roots uh, in this feud with Hangman Page. Man, I love it. I absolutely love it. It's amazing how Danielson, one second, gets has all the crowd behind him, has all the pro wrestling fans behind him, and then the next second, he's, he's getting booed. I mean, and, and, you know, we'll get into the match here in just a bit, but I mean, this crowd was so anti-Danielson and so pro-Hangman and pro-Dark Order. It, it was unbelievable. I mean, I hardly could hear any Danielson cheers in this Norfolk crowd tonight, man. I mean, they, they're they're really, they were like pretty much completely anti-Danielson, man. And it's like, and it goes to show you the the amazing character work of Brian Danielson, man. You know, even back in WWE, you know, when he, when he turned heel and became the Planet's champion and all that, yep. you know, I was sitting here wondering, you know, man, this guy was so over as a babyface. I don't know. I'm wondering how will he, how will it work with him turning heel now? And lo and behold, it was one of the best reigns we've seen in re recent memory, especially coming out of WWE. That reign he had as the Planet's Champion was was a thing of beauty in it. And Brian Danielson is just a true professional, and he's really, uh, you know, getting himself, you know, just right with this character work here against Hangman Page, and it's just going to put Hangman Page that much more over in the end when these two eventually lock up. 
and I'm loving it, man. Danielson showing off these these heel roots. It's it's uh, it's awesome to watch. Yeah, before we get into the match, I just want to say the past few years that I've seen uh, Reigns as WWE champion in WWE, when he was the champion, the, the, the WWE champion, and he was a heel, eco-friendly, that stuff um, with the eco-friendly title. Legitimately, that was probably one of the greatest WWE championship reigns that I've seen in a long time. Like, I cannot remember somebody who's had a better reign than uh, than he did in, in many years. I just wanted to bring that up real quick. I mean, there's really nobody that I can really think of. Can you? Not really, man. I mean, in, in an era of WWE where it's just complete trash, man. I mean, and this was just only a few years ago. But, I mean, even still, the product was like, I mean, it's been garbage for a lot of recent years. And so the fact that, I mean, Brian was just such a standout for, for SmackDown at that time and being the, the WWE champion and then eventually dropping the title to Kofi Kingston at WrestleMania. I mean, it, it just made for such a, an amazing reign, an amazing moment at WrestleMania that a lot of people will look at for many years because it was a, definitely a, a huge, huge moment for, for Kofi Kingston. Uh, and, I mean, the fact that Brian put him over the way that he did, it was just so great. Um, and so it's just, it goes to, I mean, Brian is just a true professional. He knows you know, what works, you know, whether he's a face or he's a heel, he knows what works. He understands the business. He understands what's going to make the crowd pop, what's going to make the crowd react, whether that be a positive or a negative reaction. He knows how to make the people react. And you got to love Brian Daniels more. It's, it's part of the reason why I love him so much, why he's my favorite is because he, he just knows how to work the crowd so well. And it's, it's, it's going to be so great going forward, seeing this whole back and forth of Danielson and Page, and how it's going to just really ultimately put Page over so so much in his first title defense. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and real quick before you get into the match, I just brought I just thought about this in my mind. I watched it last night after I got home from class. Um, <laughs> did you see where Danielson buried vlogs on Sammy Kavar's video? I didn't see I, that. No, I didn't see that. Oh my god. You got to go watch it. It's Sammy It's Sammy Guevara's latest vlog. It's the first about two minutes and 30 seconds of the video. It's just him burying vlogs and saying, like, uh, don't watch vlogs. They're a waste of time. Uh, we have such we have such big problems in, uh, in in the world, and all these young people need to be dependent on. And they're out here making vlogs. It's really funny. You got to go check it out. I can't I can't blame I can't. Danielson, man. I mean, honestly, like when it comes to, you know, the youth of America and uh, what they're focused on these days, I'm, I, I guess you can classify me as a bit of a boomer, even though I'm a, I'm a, I'm a proud millennial. Uh, but, you know, it's uh, yeah, I mean, I, I can side with Danielson on that. Man, I look at a lot of the youth today. I'm like shaking my head at like the, the all the, the focus on the uh, social media uh, there is with the youth. But, you know, it is what it is. It's a it's a new world. Yeah, we stuff live like in, so. Stuff like TikTok, TikTok's taking over the world now. So I would love, I would love Danielson to make a TikTok. Imagine Brian Danielson on TikTok. <laughs> I mean, hey, the Undertaker of all people's on TikTok. I mean, anything. Can I happen, know. You know? <laughs> Basically, almost like every wrestler is on TikTok now. Not every wrestler, but like most of the wrestlers in the industry, they're all on TikTok. You know? Yeah, it's. I, I think we should all uh, we should all do a. Uh, a sort of petition for Brian Danielson to open up a TikTok account. I think I think we need to start doing that. <laughs> um, so we had the match with Danielson and Uno. It was a good match. Um, the crowd was booing Danielson and cheering for Evil Uno again. Danielson getting the crowd to hate on him. He was taunting with the crowd during the match and get, trying to get them loud. And the crowd was chanting no instead of yes. It just goes to show you how much of a true professional and how much of a legend that he is. And he beat Evil Uno with the triangle, right? Yep, yeah, the triangle hold. And he didn't he didn't let go after the match. He kept the hold in. Flex uh, the biceps all, too. Yep. Yeah, yeah flex the biceps. Yep. Shivani was in the ring and Danielson was like, All I wanted to do is congratulate Hangman Page and he had a terrible behavior and he started all of this. So now I don't know how long I have to wait for to face Hangman Page for the world title. But until that time, just like I did to Evil Uno, 
I'm going to kick every single member of the Dark Order's heads in. And he challenged Colt Cabana to a match next week on Dynamite, where the show is going to be in Chicago. So that should be a really good match. What you think of the match tonight with uh, Danielson and uh, Uno? Yeah, I thought this was a, a great opening match. Uh, Evil Uno, man. I mean, again, people need to give more respect to Evil Uno. The guy is severely underrated, man. I mean, you know, people, I think there was some people going into this thinking, oh, Danielson and Evil Uno, that may not be that great of a match. I mean, hello, hold, you're talking about Brian Danielson, one of the best wrestlers in the world, and you got Evil Uno, one of the most underrated wrestlers in the entire world. These guys are going to deliver a great match, and that's exactly what they did. It was hard hitting. Danielson wasn't messing around. He was kind of taunting Uno. Uno kept firing back, giving with chops and uh, forearms and stuff. And uh, he wanted to really bring that aggressive side of Uno out. And, uh, you know, like you were saying, Joseph, a, bi a big anti-Danielson crowd in Norfolk tonight and a big pro-Uno crowd for this match. Uh, but Danielson ended up uh, winning. He hit the uh, the running knee. And then he, uh, he I, I love uh, his audible uh, yell to the crowd. I'm going to kick his fucking head in. I, I love that, man. A little detail like that. I just, I loved it. And he grabbed him, stomped his head in, locked in the, de uh, the triangle hold. And that was that. And, uh, and, uh, and again, you know, I brought, just, you know, brought it up too with Danielson uh, flexing the double biceps as he was uh, tapping out Evil Uno or pat having him pass out. Uh, it was just a tremendous touch there. But, uh, yeah, man, going forward, uh, Danielson is, uh, is going to be showing more and more heel tendencies, and it's going to be so great to watch. And he's vowed to take every single member of the uh, Dark Order out by kicking their head in. It started out with Evil Uno tonight. Next week, it's Colt Cabana in Chicago. And then one by one, we'll get to Alan Angel, we'll get to Preston Vance, we'll get to uh, we'll get to Stu Grayson, and then we'll probably probably finally we'll get uh, we'll probably uh, get Alex Reynolds, and then finally be John Silver. You know, he's gonna step through each and every single one of them, man. And it's gonna be and it's all gonna deliver some great matches too. This was just the start of it, and now it's gonna continue on week by week by week until we get to that world title match, whenever that might be. But I thought this was a an excellent first thirty minutes of uh, AEW Dynamite tonight. Uh, before we move on to the next match, you know, you have your haters on social media who are going to say, oh, this person's buried and whatever. Um, do you think on the road to the match and he faces uh, Daniel and um, Danielson faces every member of the Dark Order, he's probably not going to lose. So do you think um, all members of the Dark Order losing to Danielson is going to bury the Dark Order? I don't think so, man. I mean, Danielson is such a decorated pro wrestler, you know, and, and they're trying to really you know, build up Danielson uh, ahead of uh, facing Paige. You know, it's like Danielson wants to call out Paige for sending his friends after him. Danielson's just looking at that and be like, all right, fine. I'll just go through them one by one until I get to you because I, I am going for that title. So I, I don't think it's going to make the Dark Order look look horrible. I mean, because in the end, Danielson's going to make them look really good uh, in these matches because I'm sure Brian Danielson has probably outwardly told Tony, Tony Khan, hey, I want to go one-on-one -on -one with every single member of the Dark Order because I really like these guys. And Danielson's all about, you know, putting over pro wrestlers, whether they whether he beats them or whether he lets them go over. You know, so I don't think this is going to ultimately affect the Dark Order in a negative way. I think this will be fine. I think this is a, a solid way to, to build up Danielson uh, going into the eventual title match with uh, Paige. Yeah. Well, let's see what happens. So I'm guessing if he's going to face every member of Dark Order, he's got him. Trying to think in my head. One, two, three, four, five, six. I think that would mean six members of Dark Order would probably be. I'm guessing that match is probably going to happen on January 5th if I had to be a betting man. Yeah, I know a lot of people have been predicting that. I feel like that's probably the ideal place to uh, have that Danielson uh, page match really build it up. And it's the first show on TBS. You really want to build that big title match up for that uh, big first show on TBS. Um, I'm wondering, though, when we're going to get that Brian Danielson and the J match. That's why I'm wondering when we're going to get that. I mean, he said oh, he's going to kick every single Dark Order's uh, member's head in. So, I mean, Anna J is a part of the Dark Order. Just saying, I don't know. We might, we're, we got to begin that match at some point. So, <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? But we're going to move on here. We had a tag team match with um, Butcher and Blade against Orange Cassidy and Tomohiro Ishii. Uh, this was a really fun tag team match. The last five minutes was freaking awesome. It had the crowd standing on his feet. Ishii got the win for his team with the brain buster onto the blade. Um, 
I freaking love the exchange between Ishii and the Butcher. And I really like the spot where Butcher was chopping in on Ishii. It looked like Ishii was hurt, but then he started to like no soul it and walk into it. And he walked into he walked the butcher into the corner and started chopping him. I thought that was uh, I, I thought that was great. And uh, I thought this was a really fun match, despite the uh, I, I despite the feud that's still happening with Orange Cassidy and Matt Hardy. I thought last Friday was going to put the end to the feud finally, but Matt Hardy did win that lumberjack match. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> the way it goes, man. It's the way it goes. But this was a fun match. You can't yeah. deny that. Yeah, no, abs- no. I mean, I, I said it on Twitter. I mean, this was a super fun match. I mean, uh, I love the involvement of Chaos. It's really added a, a nice layer to this, you know, this awful feud that I want to die, wanted to die a thousand deaths already. But I will say the involvement of New Japan and Chaos, I love it. Uh, it's only a matter of time before we get a Kazushiko Okada in AEW. He's been mentioned quite a bit on AEW television. It's only a matter of time before uh, the Rainmaker makes his appearance. Uh, on AEW television, but uh, but yeah, this was a super fun tag match. I love seeing Ishii on uh, on Dynamite tonight. Uh, man, that guy is great. You know, I I, I love him and Cassie interacting together too was really fun. I thought they they meshed well together too when it came to like kind of the comedy uh, parts of the match too. Uh, but the crowd was definitely hyped up for this. The, that this Norfolk crowd, I gotta give them props. They were a really high energy crowd tonight. Yeah. Uh, they 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 were on fire for like pretty much every segment, every match. That I don't think they were dead for like any any part. But uh, this was um this was very fun. Uh, Cassie and Ishii pick up the win. Uh, I know we got another Cassie Hardy match coming at some point. So if we're gonna do it, please do it and please end this feud because I'm so over it. This was fun. But please end this HFO best friends feud. I am sick and tired of it. We need to move on. This is, I, I mean, Cassie was great tonight and, you know, he was, he was really over. But I really feel like this feud is not doing him any favors whatsoever. It's not doing anybody any favors. I mean, we really need to do some better programs here with, with both Hardy and Cassie. It's just, it's just, it's, uh, this is like literally my least favorite feud. It's everybody's least favorite feud. Everybody on Twitter is like saying the same thing as I'm saying in the feud already we're over it we want to move on so hey man you gotta be patient with it though so uh who knows we might with why what's the end game i don't know we, the we end might game. get the end game is we might get okada out of this we might get a match well, between now that's great now that's great i'm not gonna complain about that that's awesome but what we're we gonna get okada and hardy though like i don't yeah I, don't, I mean i don't know i i it's like if okada's gonna have his first match in aw it's gotta be it's gotta be against somebody i mean no offense to matt hardy i just like <laughs> i mean it's just i don't know like okada's first match being against matt hardy i mean i just i don't know it's just like you got all you just got a lot of people there no offense to matt hardy i love matt hardy i do i do but it's just uh but i mean it i just hope whatever happens and we just move on quickly because i just i need this feud to just this feud is i feel like it's been going on for like years and it's only been probably like a few months but like it really feels like an eternity <laughs> it's been going on since the crowds have came back gosh <laughs> it's, it's, it's been going on for four uh, months <laughs> golly man i mean like i just don't get like why we're just dragging this out so long. it's like how many more matches can we see with these guys i mean because like I, I was watching elevation yesterday and like i saw another like dark order hfo match and, like i have seen every possible iteration and more of, of dark order and hfo and hfo and best friends i literally just skip past it i'm like i, I can't <laughs> i just can't i've seen every iteration at this point I can't keep seeing the same. It's it's becoming like Monday Night Raw, man. It's rematch, rematch, rematch. But I don't I don't mean to compare AEW to Monday Night Raw because AEW, of course, is a way way better program. But in a way, I'm just saying in a way, it's like I'm watching rematches on Monday Night Raw every single week again. You know, so. Um, we'll move on. TBS Championship Tournament resumed tonight. We had Nyla Rose against Hikaru Shida. I thought this was a pretty good match. They work really well together. They faced each other in a bunch in the past. Um, So they had their match tonight. Excuse me. To move on to the um, semifinals of the TBS Tournament. For me, this was probably more about Serena Diebenfall with her feud with Sheena. They made it clear that her goal is to take out Sheena 
and, and damage Sheeta as much as she can. Um, you know, she came out of the crowd. She she attacked the knee. She ran back into the she ran back into the crowd, and um, we got a we got a Norfolk chanting "Shut up, Vicky." We got Sheeta hitting Vicky with the kendo stick, and um, uh, Nyla Rose won at the end. Uh, I forget how she won. Was it with a beast bomb? Uh, it was with the uh, stretch muffler submission hold. Oh, that's right. Uh, damaging her knee. Okay. So they're, they've been really telling a story about Sheeta's knee ever since the feud with Serena Deep. Listen, I like the feud. I really do. I can't wait for that third match. It's going to be incredible. Um, I don't know. I kind of I kind of wish Sheeta went over in this match. Yeah, I'm I, with you there. I'm kind of wish. Yeah, I, I personally yeah. wanted Cheetah to, to win, uh, but I, I figured, you know, D was going to play a role in this, uh, and Nyla Rose is going to pick up the win and move on to the next round. So I, I it's like I kind of expected it. I was like, okay, I, Cheetah's probably not going to win, but I had a little bit of hope that maybe she could. But they really, the near falls in this match were really, really good, especially towards the end. I thought the near falls were very, very close to the, cl- uh, very close, and uh, I thought uh, they really had people on the edge of their seats. And the crowd was. Again, another match with the crowd was just very high energy. I loved it, man. I love it. I especially love it when it's for the women. I mean, they definitely deserve the credit. And I thought, I personally thought this was an awesome match between uh, Nyla Rose and uh, Hikaru Shida. I thought this was a great way to uh, kick off the quarterfinal of the tournament. And uh, it looks like we're going to get a third match with uh, Serena Deeb and Hikaru Shida. Uh, sign me up. I, I love it when these two are in the ring together. So sign me up for that third match. And we got Nyla Rose advancing to the next round space. Either uh, Chris Statlander or Ruby Soho. Personally, I think it's going to be Ruby Soho, but it uh, it should it should be really good. But I thought this was an awesome women's match tonight. Uh, you know, got a great got a good amount of time too. It got the crowd really hot, and I uh, love uh, Vicky getting a shut up. Vicky Channing also getting hit by the kendo stick that popped me. Sorry, Vicky, but you know it popped me. Uh, but um, yeah, but that this was this was really good, and uh, and yeah, it's it, you know it set up a. Uh, you know, a non-title uh, women's feud that, you know, a lot of people are invested in, too, which I love. You know, it reminds me of, like, Io Shirai and uh, Candice LeRae and NXT when they yeah, had their yeah, non-title yeah. feud. I mean, heck, that feud was hotter than the women's championship feud at that time yeah, as well. I, that was when Baszler was champion. I can't remember who she was feuding with at the time. I think it might have been Mia Yim, maybe. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah but, I know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, this kind of it gives me kind of reminders of that because we all know uh, what Sheeta and Deep can do together in that ring, and now we're gonna have that third matchup, and it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be fun to watch. Yeah, I can't wait for that match. Um, has Sheeta does Sheeta use a submission hold? Uh, I I know she used the triangle hold tonight on uh, Rose. She did try doing that. I don't know if she's too, too much of a submission person, but I just you know I just so used to her doing the running knee and. Uh, you know, doing the the big kicks and stuff. So, you know. I don't know. I think a submission match between these two would be interesting. Yeah, I think it would, too. I mean, whatever we get, I think we're going to be in for a real treat. And uh, it's definitely going to be a, a well-built up uh, third match for sure. Yep, 100%. So, Nyla Rose wins. They had a good match. I, I just wish she have went over. That's my only complete in the match. Besides that, I thought it was a good match. Um... We had – what do we have after this, MJF? Uh, yes, we did have MJF after this. We had – okay. All right, we had MJF come out. He got booed from the Norfolk crowd. Uh, the feud with Darby Allen seems to be uh, on hold, which I'm kind of shocked about because I thought I honestly thought that feud was going to continue. Um, I know you went on here. I was doing a review. I was doing a review – by myself on Saturday night. That match was insane on Saturday. I they absolutely killed it. It was personally my favorite match of the night. I would probably it's close between yeah. that match and the main event. I'm gonna put that match in front of the main event. I thought that match was absolutely I thought that I thought it was an, a fantastic match. I really did. Um and when I thought about them starting the show, I'm like, hmm, you know what? Uh, two, last year at Full Gear, the opening was, uh, whatchamacallit, the opening was Hangman Page and Kenny Omega uh, in the World Title Eliminated. This year, MJF and Darby 
main evented. I'm thinking by full gear next year, the main event for that on that show is going to be MJF versus Darby Allen for the World Championship. That's what I thought. I don't know if it's. I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, we'll see. But I got my theory. I, I got my theory coming out of this segment. So MJF trash talked and all that. All all that shit says he's better than everybody. Uh, he's the most complete wrestler in the world, which you know might be the case. Actually, I'm gonna. I'll give him that. He actually might be the most complete wrestler, um, in the world. Um, uh, what, what did he say? Uh, he's talked about on being undefeated. He talked about uh, Virginia's hometown cowboy, and he take a shit on his title reign and stuff like that. And he says. Nobody is on my. So MJF cuts a cuts a pretty good cuts a very good promo, and then out came CM Punk. CM Punk's theme song came out. He just walked out to the ring, no microphone in hand. They he didn't he didn't say a word. He just stared at MJF. MJF said, "Uh, I'm Maxwell, whatever." Like so he said, that's what he said, right? Right. He's like, hi, Maxwell. And he offered out his hand. Yeah. Yeah. So he offered out his hand. CM Punk laughed at him <laughs> and he walked away. And MJF was really mad. Like he was walking around with his hand out like this. So uh, CM Punk didn't offer the handshake. I usually would get your theory on this first, but I'm going to give my, my theory on it. I don't think they're going to feud right away. I really think this is for the this is long, okay, long term storytelling, just like they did with Hangman Page. Um, and I tweeted out on uh, I think Sunday it was so some something like that Saturday or Sunday. Um, after uh, after the storyline they completed with Hangman Page on Saturday, which was nearly a two year storyline. If you're telling me AEW doesn't uh, do long-term storytelling. You're lying to yourself, okay? You are lying to yourself. So here's my theory. This is long-term storytelling with CM Punk and MJF. I don't think they're going to feud right away. I think it's too early. There's a better time down the road, I think, that these guys could be feuding. As we all know, we uh, everybody thinks that the next world champion is going to be MJF. And he's already planting seeds, right, Wes? Yeah. Yep. Yep. He's already planting seeds. He's mentioned the world title a bunch of times. He's mentioned Hangman Page's name uh, tonight. He mentioned Hangman Page, and um, I think MJF is going to win the world title. Could be a revolution. I, I don't know. That might be a little too early, but I think. When MJF is the world champion, we get a feud between MJF and CM Punk for the world championship. And, th and this promo will come back to bite MJF in the, in the ass. Because I could see M AEW, uh, you know, going back to this very moment and MJF saying that nobody's on his level. And then Punk is going to beat him for the world championship and be like, I thought nobody was on your level. That's what I think is going to happen. So I don't think they're going to feud now. I think it's too early for them to feud. Um, and I, I could be wrong. I, I don't know. I, I could be wrong on them feuding right now. But um, that's what I think is going to happen. Because in my theory, once MJF beats Hangman, I think I think CM Punk is going to be the person to beat MJF for the world title. What about you? Uh, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, you know, it could be played out a little bit longer. Uh, but I, I definitely love the Seeds Planets tonight with this feud. I mean, it was so simple and so amazing and, and the best way possible. And that, that's the beautiful thing with pro wrestling is like, it's so simple to book little like little things like this it, like little details I, I mention it all the time little details man like it doesn't have to be overbooked it doesn't have to be anything like out of this way it doesn't have to be all over the place it doesn't have to be all extravagant or anything like that 
if you just book it so simply and so subtly, like the way they did this this promo uh, segment here, where Punk simply just walks out, looks in, looks down at MJF's hand as he offers it out to him, uh, looks back at him, laughs, and just walks away. I mean, that's all. Punk didn't even need to say a word. And I mentioned this on Twitter, man. The eventual promo battle between these two men is going to be one of the greatest promo battles I think we will ever see in pro wrestling, man, because these two guys are going to absolutely destroy each other on the mic. I mean, what Can was you something- Eddie Kingston? It's going gonna, it's gonna to be tough, but I, I think it could happen, though, man. MJF is a master of his craft as well. We can't discredit MJF. But uh, I wanted to mention, too, the, the full gear match with MJF, Darby Allen, just really quick. Uh, other than the main event, that was by far my favorite match in full gear. Those two guys exceed i mean i thought the match itself was going to be tremendous yeah i went into thinking this is gonna be awesome but man these guys exceeded my expectations when i watched this match saturday night man i mean that was such a perfect way to open full gear so i just wanted to point that out um but yeah um firstly what i see when it comes to like the world title at least uh you know it could happen to revolution maybe but i do believe mjf is going to be the one to dethrone hangman page they have you know, these guys have a history with each other. MJF already mentioned Paige's name tonight. That was a little seed planted. MJF already teasing becoming the next uh, AEW world champion. So there's a tease there. So I do believe MJF eventually will be the one to dethrone Paige. But if uh, if people if anybody's going to dethrone uh, MJF as the world champion, I personally, I could see it being Darby Allen being the one to dethrone MJF as world okay. champion. Because we saw, you know, we, you, you mentioned it, Joseph. We saw Darby and MJF kick off uh, Full Gear this past Saturday. Last year, the opener of Full Gear was Hangman Page and Omega. This year, they were the main event. It could come around full circle once again for Darby and MJF. They opened up Full Gear this year. They killed it. And I could see that match happening again at next year's Full Gear uh, in 2022 between those two guys for the AEW World title. That's what I was thinking about uh, after the pay-per-view Saturday. I was thinking, hmm. I think I can kind of see the next couple of champions now played out. Paige, MJF, Darby Allen. That's just me. I don't know if anybody else is thinking about that too, but I do believe that is something uh, they could do there is have Paige. I, personally, I, I, I would rather Paige probably drop the title double or nothing, if you ask me. I'd rather him probably hold it till double or nothing, drop it there. MJF wins, holds the title for those few months there leading into full gear. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing it would be in November next year, and we do that uh, MJF-Darby rematch for the world title. Uh, and the main event of Full Gear. So that's how I'm seeing it. Uh, that's how I'm seeing the long-term storytelling, because guess what, people? Long-term storytelling exists, and it exists in AEW. If you've been paying attention for the past two years, look at the story, look at the journey of Hangman Page becoming the AEW World Champion. And I mentioned this on Twitter the other day, because I wanted to I wanted to rub it in that loser's face. Jobber Nation TV, the guy, that guy months ago wanted to tell me, hmm, I think Hangman Page is going to be the first one to jump from AEW to WWE because Tony Khan is not booking him correctly. He's being jobbed out. He's being pushed down the card. Really? Hmm. Let's see. Did I wonder if Jobber Nation watched this past Saturday because if he did, um, I think I saw – You might. I mean, he could have seen something different, but, I mean, I saw Hangman Page become the AEW World Champion by dethroning Kenny Omega. So – I don't know if he's uh, I don't know if he's jumping to WWE anytime soon, Jarvis Nation. I know I know it crushes your dreams. I know I, I know you desperately want to see the hangar and and WWE, uh, you know, uh, being underutilized and not being put on TV and being put in main event and being placed in catering every single week. But that just isn't the case. I mean, we got a new world champion, so I just wanted to dig a little bit deeper into Jobber Nation uh, TV. That a little the little clown in the community. Just wanted to do a little dig there, but that's all I got to say on that. But Back to uh, the real story. Yeah, that's how I see uh, the overall story with the world title being played out, in my opinion. So, All right. I had it being uh, my theory. I had it being MJF, Punk, and then Darby. That's what I was thinking. That's not, that's not bad either. I, we'll see. Hey, man, AEW is going to give – they're going to deliver. When it comes to these – these big views, I mean, when it comes to the television programs, man, they're going to keep delivering and they're going to keep giving us the goods. And we're going to sit here and we're going to continue to enjoy it, man. So, I mean, Tony Khan knows what he's doing. He's got, I'm, I'm sure he's already in his office is brainstorming everything, you know, for the next couple of years. And it's, I mean, it's going to be tremendous to watch, man, to see the, the growth more and more of AEW. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, we got two more matches to talk about. We got uh, the acclaimed Max Caster and Anthony Bowens 
against um, uh, Leo Rush and Dante Martin. Uh, now, before we talk about the match, I want to mention something. Um, and to me, uh, in the past, I would say, what, two months, a uh, couple months, uh, really this week, it, it's very, very, very clear how much uh, Dante Martin means to AEW, how much AEW cares about Dante Martin, how much spotlight AEW is giving to Dante Martin. He was on the Dynamite match last week, which is amazing. Um, he had a match Friday night on Rampage. They were putting over Big Hell. He's a mini. He's 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 from Minnesota. He grew up in Minnesota. Um, he had a segment on the buy-in of Full Gear to see uh, which faction wants Dante Martin. Um, he uh, he was speaking on the. Uh, uh, the, uh, what AEW does after the pay-per-views, uh, the, 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 the press conferences, uh, he was on that. And it's really just a lot of, uh, a lot of spotlight AEW is giving to Dante Martin. And uh, he is going to be a player, a big-time player. I'm not talking five years or anything. I'm talking 20 years. He's going to be a big-time player in AEW. And... You know, the kid's my age, all right? That kid's 20 years old. I'm 19. We're pretty similar. And, um, you know, uh, it's pretty pretty crazy to think about that a 20-year-old kid, Dante Martin, is going to be the – he's the future of AEW. And to me, it's very clear um, how much AEW cares about him and how much Tony Khan loves Dante Martin. So – I really just wanted to point that out real quick. I don't know if you agree with me, but I guess you could give your take really quick. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree, man. I, I love uh, what Dante Martin has been bringing to the table, man. I mean, it, it's amazing how, you know, uh, when when Darius unfortunately got hurt and, and it put the top flight tag team on hold, man, the, the fact that Tony Khan has, has taken Dante Martin, he saw the talent there uh, and, and just a young 20-year-old, and he's like, you know what? This guy's very exciting. Let's put him in front of the AEW crowds and see how they they think. And uh, I think AEW fans are very pleased when they watch Dante Martin uh, in the ring, man. And uh, I, I certainly am pleased as a as a pro wrestling fan myself. And uh, man, yeah, and I agree with you, Joe. So the next twenty years, I think uh, Dante Martin is going to be one of the biggest stars uh, in this company. He's already, I mean, he's arguably the the youngest rising, the the biggest youngest rising star in the company right now in all of pro wrestling, really, because. I mean, this guy has just really gotten himself over just, you know, bit, mostly from his in-ring ability. But the fact that he's just such an underdog baby face and people have a reason to get behind him, it's just so great to see. And I just love that, uh, you know, even with Top Flight, the tag team being put on hold, uh, you know, Tony Khan has just done everything in his power to make Dante Martin just go out there and, and just have him just show what, show the world why he belongs and, and show the world why he is the future of pro wrestling and then uh, just giving him a big chance here. And, uh, and Dante Martin has excelled uh, with flying colors, if you ask me. And uh, his alignment with Leo Rush, I'm loving it. I think it's great. And uh, it, it seemed like, you know, it seems like we're kind of seeing Leo Rush phased into more of a baby face role right now, even though it was kind of looking like he was being the heel in this situation where he's trying to kind of, you know, talk, get Dante Martin to come with him, come join the, the dark side. But it seems like now with this potential new feud being set up now that we'll, we'll get into, uh, it seems like Leo Rush is kind of phasing more into the, the baby face, uh, the ways of, uh, of um, booking, but, uh, and w which I don't mind. I think Leo Rush, regardless if he's a heel or baby face, I think, I mean, the guys in ring ability, I think alone will get people to be like, yeah, I, I care about this guy. I think I want to see more of this. Oh guy my God. For sure. Dude. Dude, really quick before we talk about the match. Um, Dante Martin is so over because of how good he is in the ring. Uh, he really can't cut. He's cut promos before. He's decent. But really, with Leo Rush by his side, he doesn't need to cut a promo. Leo Rush is right there. Leo Rush can talk for him. Dante Martin is going to get over from being, from being how he is in the ring and uh, leaving people sh shocked and speechless. And... Uh, this team killed it tonight. Again, bro. Again. This team killed it. An awesome match. 
Max Castro and Anthony Bowens for what was it like 10 minutes they got yeah I think so <laughs> yeah they got about 10 minutes and had an awesome match Leo uh, got the pin over Anthony Bowens Max Caster uh, no I'm sorry Excalibur was really putting over on commentary after they won how how much of a big win this is for Dante and Leo and uh, how much they beat a top five tag team and the acclaim were a top five uh, like number four in the rankings so now with them losing I, I can see them dropping um, and, we'll, and then we'll get into the team tag situation a little bit but um, can you see them challenging the Lucha Bros for the tag team titles like I don't, know, I don't know, next couple weeks, maybe, maybe in a couple months. Think of the claim? No, I'm talking uh, Dante Martin and Leo Rush against the Lucha Bros. Okay. Yeah, I, I could see that. Yeah, I was actually thinking about that before Dynamite, and I was thinking, you know, Dante and Leo is a tag team. I was thinking in my head, oh my gosh, how amazing what a match would that would be against the Lucha Brothers for the tag titles, like a potential tag team title match right there, like, I get Ray Phoenix and Dante Martin in the same ring at the same time. I mean, not to mention two Phoenix and and Leo Rush. Like, I mean, like you, these guys are gonna be flying all over the place if if we do eventually get that tag title match. So I could see that happening for sure. Uh, I mean, Dante Martin and Leo Rush have already shown that these guys mesh so well together. I, I mentioned on Twitter they mesh they mesh so smoothly together as a tag team. But you know, I specifically wanted to use the word smooth because it's just they make everything look so smooth and crisp in that ring. I mean, they make the yeah, hardest like thing. like that like that opening sequence of the match they did on Anthony Bones. Right. Yeah. It's 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 unbelievable, man. And uh, and this was a, a very fun tag team match. But another very fun tag team match. We had two fun tag matches tonight. Uh, the both teams delivered. I uh, love Max Caster's line before the match where he was saying, uh, Leo Rush, I think you're better off as a manager. And I was like, oh, boy. <laughs> like, that was that was a nice debate. I'm telling you, man, Max Caster each and every single week, all hits, no misses, man. That guy that guy is so good at his job. Um, but, yeah, this was a, a very fun tag match. Uh, right team went over. And uh, I guess you, you want to go ahead and go over the Team Taz stuff? Sure. So... Taz and, and then his crew came out. Basically, they're, they're trying to lure Dante into a faction and get away from Leo Rush, and they want to recruit him. Ricky Stark said, you got two options. Um, uh, number one, you could join us and have a Hall of Fame career. And number two, you don't join us and you have a mediocre career. So I really don't, I don't – I think this is basically just setting up a feud – I don't know how long it's going to be, but I could probably see um, a match between Starks and Hobbs against uh, Leo Rush and Dante Martin out of this. So, well, what do you think? Yeah, I, I yeah. think so too. I think that's where it's uh, all leading. Uh, is uh, Dante Martin, Leo Rush versus um, Ricky Starks and Powerhouse Hobbs. But um, it's nice because it gives Team Taz something to do because they haven't really been doing much of anything for ever since they – uh, Hobbs had that match with CM Punk on uh, on Rampage at uh, Arthur Ashe Stadium, so it's nice to see Team Taz now like kind of doing something. They're kind of in a storyline now, and they're trying to lure Dante Martin into their group. Uh, but I do not, I don't think it's going to end up working out. I think Dante Martin's going to stay right where he is with Leo Rush. But uh, if we're going to get an eventual tag match with uh, Dante and Leo versus uh, Hobbs and Starks, I mean, sign me up for that. I think that'd be a really solid tag team match. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we got that. Before we get to the main event, uh, we got some shows to break down, some cards. Friday night on Rampage, we got Darby Allen against Billy Gunn. So Darby Allen cut a promo earlier, and he said he uh, he wants to fight the toughest and biggest men. And I'm thinking, hmm, you know, there's so many. Um, you know, there's so many big guys, and they bring out freaking Billy Gunn. Like, like come on, man. I mean, I mean, I got, I, I, you got to give Billy Gunn at least. I mean, the dude looks great. Nah, for him. I know. Dude looks I know that. Friday. Yeah. Yeah. I had Cameron's kind of a fun with that one on Friday. <laughs> gun uh, Club, baby. <laughs> respect the Gun Club. Yeah. Gun Club, baby. Yes. <laughs> so we have uh, Billy Gunn against Darby Allen. Uh, quarterfinals at the TBS Championship Tournament. Jade Cargill against Red Velvet. I'm looking forward to that match. I thought they had a very good match. 
the first time around. That was one of Jade's first matches in AEW as well. I think it was like her third or fourth match, and they, they had a very good match. So I'm looking forward to see what they're going to do this time around. And then the uh, uh, the main event on Friday, uh, Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus against Adam Cole and Bobby Fish. That should be a, a great tag team match. So uh, that is Rampage. We will be here Friday night talking about that show. And then next Wednesday is Dynamite from Chicago. Just one day away until Thanksgiving. Um Man, that's a nice combination. Dynamite the night before Thanksgiving. Can't ask for anything better than that. I, I Thanksgiving is disrespected. For all the, by the way, I don't want to get off of hand right here, but I see people hyping up Christmas already. Okay? After Halloween, okay? It's November 1st. and I, I mean, it's it was November 1st and people are hyping Christmas. Stop disrespecting Thanksgiving, man. Stop disrespecting Thanksgiving. It's one of the top holidays of the year. Yeah, listen, I, I'm, listen to the man. Listen to the man, people. Thank, Thanksgiving deserves all the love and respect just as much as Christmas. Look, look, when it's November, I, I think it's going to be November 26th this year, when the day after Thanksgiving comes and it's Black Friday, then we talk about Christmas. Yes. I, 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 I'm with you, Joseph, man. I'm with you right away. I mean, I, I, this has been happening for like – so many years now it's like people just go right from halloween to christmas hey no we got a pretty big holiday in between there called thanksgiving where we're supposed to be thankful for all that we have in our life like thankful for thankful for our friends thankful for our families hell we're here we're thankful for aew because if it weren't for aew a lot of us probably wouldn't be watching professional wrestling right now so you know folks show the love and respect to thanksgiving we're big thanksgiving marks around here and you should be too so don't forget about thanksgiving celebrate talk about christmas after thanksgiving the day after thanksgiving go crazy go chris Christmas yes. all around bring up the christmas trees bring up the lights do whatever you want santa sandy claus is going to come on to town let's just do, do the whole <laughs> shindig but we gotta we gotta think about thanksgiving first come on hey, on on uh on the 26th of november now i'll be hit i'll be uh driving around uh here in orlando and uh uh playing some christmas tunes now so there you go there you go i mean that that's when you're supposed to celebrate christmas so don't so remember don't don't disrespect thanksgiving because that, you're gonna regret it i'm telling you you're, you're gonna regret it <laughs> i'm gonna tweet something out about that after the show so uh, you, but I'm anyway i'm man. anyway i'm thankful for the show that we're getting next week from chicago um Danielson, Brian Danielson against Cole Cabana, Jamie Hayter against Thunder Rosa in the quarterfinals of the TBS Championship Tournament, and uh, we're getting an eight-man tag. I saw this one coming. Um, I pretty new. Uh, I saw this coming from miles away. Uh, next week we're getting Cody Rhodes and Death Triangle against FTR, Andrade, and Malachi Black. Um, I think this is going to be an awesome match. I love all of these guys. Um, you know, maybe not besides Cody, but I love the rest of them. But um, I'm kind of, is it, is it me? But do you kind of wish that this match is the end game for all of these feuds? Um, I mean, I guess so. I, I still kind of feel like FTR might get one more shot just because they were kind of, I guess, screwed out of the title match at sat on Saturday. So maybe that we get one more title match between them just because FTR does have an excuse there. But I don't know. We'll have to see. But uh, I'm looking forward to it. I think that's going to be a very fun eight-man tag next week. Uh, yeah. all, all those guys together in the same ring. I can't can't complain about it but yeah I, I do hope we kind of start to see like maybe new feuds uh brew out of this because i would like to see all these guys kind of move on to something else so yeah i would like to see malachi black fight other people besides the nightmare family <laughs> i mean he had, he did fight dante martin and won you know, a great match there so i mean that's yeah, one I'm, person i, that's I saw one that person, yeah so. yeah i saw that one so um let's talk about this main event shall we um Sammy Kavar defending the TNT Championship against Jay Lethal. And before we talk about the match, um, Jay Lethal made it clear on Saturday that he found the forbidden door. And because of that door, um, he's now all elite. I love him. I've been a, I've been a fan of Jay Lethal for years. Uh, I think he is absolutely 
great in the ring, and I even think he's got he's better. Uh, he's a he's really entertaining. Uh, we know that Ric Flair segment from many years ago in TNA. He's got great charisma. I I really think this is a good signing. It looks like these ROH guys so with them uh, with ROH, um, you know. Um, shutting down, you know, we're suddenly seeing, starting to see a lot of these guys um, go elsewhere. And this is uh, AEW's first signing with all these ROH talents and Jay Lethal. And I like that one. I really do. Uh, I really think Jay Lethal is going to do big things in AEW. So I'll hand it over to you. And then you can actually talk about the main event first. Yeah, I'm very happy with the Jay Lethal signing, man. I've been a big fan of Jay Lethal uh, since the TNA days when he was the uh, the black machismo uh, in TNA, uh, all, all, all way back when, back when AJ Styles and Samoa Joe and all those guys were there. Uh, so he he was definitely one of the big standouts uh, at that time for sure. And he's always been a, a tremendous wrestler. And uh, and it's crazy how he he's never like you know really made it big until now, man. Just knowing how great he is, you know, it's like you would have. Expected him maybe to, to land, you know, maybe in a WWE years ago. But, uh, you know, thankfully he didn't end up going to WWE after all. Uh, and he's over here now in AEW. So it's really cool to see he's, he's made it to the big stage. And uh, the guys, and it said like on his uh, his title, his nameplate tonight uh, when he's making his entrance, he's won 20 different championships across his 19-year uh, career. And uh, that's, that's pretty phenomenal if you ask me. Uh, but yeah, I'm very happy to see him in AEW. I think he's definitely going to be kind of like a, a Bobby Fish type role where he's going to be that great veteran presence that puts over the younger talent. Uh, but I do think they're going to use Lethal in a, in a really significant way. So it's really I'm really happy with that signing. Um, and I thought this main event uh, was awesome. The crowd was on their feet for it. Uh, you know, we got the we got the veteran versus the uh, the young the young star and uh, Sammy Guevara man going at it for the team to tell the first ever open challenge main event. On AEW uh, history, uh, X Caliber pointed that out on commentary tonight. Uh, but I thought these two men meshed really well together. Some great, great spots in the match. I uh, love the standing st- sp- Spanish fly in the middle of the ring from Sammy. Uh, the big spot he had uh, jumping onto the table on the outside. Just great stuff there. And uh, but of course, uh, as we all kind of expected, Sammy did retain the TNT title in the end against Jay Lethal. Uh, I will say this: I did. I, there was a report before Dynamite tonight, in case anybody didn't see. That the uh, the Briscoes, who are from Ring of Honor as well, they were reported backstage at AEW Dynamite tonight. And I, I honestly, when I heard that report, I was thinking, I wonder if they might be involved somehow in that uh, match between Lethal and Guevara. That did not end up happening. But I do believe that the Briscoes were backstage in AEW, that they're uh, they're eventually going to make their appearance. So uh, I thought that was very interesting there. But uh, if the Briscoes are showing up in AEW, man, with already the tag team division they got going uh my goodness, man, you got an all-timer of a tag team division right there, if you ask me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I uh, We'll see if uh, the Briscoes are going to be in AEW. We heard they were backstage tonight. But what did you think of the match? I'll, I'll go after you, and then we'll close it up. Yeah, uh, yeah. awesome, awesome match. Uh, you know, both men really tore it up in the main event. Uh, crowd was definitely into it, man. Got, again, got to give a lot of credit to the North Wolf crowd, man. They 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 killed it tonight. I love their energy uh, throughout the entire show. I mean, they really were not quiet for a single segment or match tonight. So I love that, man. AEW crowds are the best. Um, but yeah, awesome match. I, I don't know. I don't know what's next uh, for uh, Sammy Guevara and the TNT title, or what's next for uh, the Inner Circle. I will have to see, um, and I'm going to be interested to see uh, what role they have Jay Lethal in going forward in AEW. But again, I'm very happy with the signing, very happy with the main event tonight, and just very happy with the show overall because it was a yeah. tremendous, tremendous fallout show. I love the main event. I thought the main event was fantastic. The right man won. Um, under a, a, a comeback win for Sammy Guevara, as it looked like during a commercial, uh, he was holding his ribs. And I don't even know how he injured his ribs. Someone said he had a match on Dark. And he, he hurt his ribs. Um, I, I just got to ask, why is the TNT champion wrestling on dark? Seriously. Do you, I, 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 I mean, I'm, I don't know, man. I guess you. Uh, I don't know. I'm just I'm just not a fan of that. I'm really not. But uh, that's just me. I could be a little picky on that. But uh, he's hurt. I, I, I thought I was I it was picture in picture. I was on my phone. And um, 
I saw the doctor with Sammy Guevara. I'm like, did he get hurt during the match or something? And I was like, no, he's just selling his ribs. But, uh, yeah, the table spot was great and all that stuff. But, um, yeah, fantastic main event. The right guy won. And like I said, Jay really thought going to do big things in AEW, in my opinion. So we will have to see what he does. Sammy Guevara is still the TNT champion. This was a great episode of AEW Dynamite tonight. We're going to wrap it up. Thank you all so much for watching. If you had not already, be sure to subscribe to the Big Fight Field channel. Um, we're going to have some more content for you this week. Might or might not do a video tomorrow night on the Dolphins-Jets game. I, I don't know. It depends on my schedule. Friday night, we will be back here with AEW Rampage with myself, um, my co-host right here, Wesley Williams. Cameron Johnson will be back Friday night to talk about Rampage. And then Sunday, we will do a reaction to the Dolphins and Jets game. I might or might not uh, review Survivor Series. I don't know. I'm probably going to end up watching the show. So we'll see how that goes. Um, wish me luck. <laughs> Pray, prayers to you, my friend. Prayers to you. If you, do, if you do decide to watch it, prayers to you. Comment down below. Uh, what do you guys think of uh, Dynamite tonight, live from Norfolk, Virginia? Hit the like button if you like what you heard from us in the video tonight. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram as well, at Conlon underscore Joseph. Wes, where can they follow you, my friend? You already know, follow me at Big underscore Wes 18 on Twitter. That is B-I-G underscore W-E-S 1-8. I talk Dynamite every single Wednesday night on Twitter and, of course, on here on the Big Fight Field channel. And I talk AEW Rampage every single Friday night on Twitter and, of course, on here with myself, Joseph Conley, Cameron Johnson. We will be back this Friday to talk more uh, AEW as we will talk about AEW Rampage, the first Rampage uh, since Full Gear. Got a great-looking card set up, so can't wait to talk about that. I'm also on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Wesley Williams 5. I had my first stream uh, this past uh, Monday afternoon. Uh, first time in over a week and a half I've streamed. Uh, I was pretty busy throughout that time, so it took me a little bit to get back into the groove, but uh, I'm back in it again. Uh, I did try to finish Crash 2. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't work out. The game got way more frustrating when it got to those last few levels, so I wasn't able. I'm almost there, and I'm not giving up completely on Crash, but... I am going to be taking a break from the game, and I will be making an announcement very soon about what game I will be playing next. It's going to be a new game on the uh, on the channel, so I hope all of you who are uh, big gaming fans come and uh, join along for the streams. But again, that is twitch.tv slash Wesley Williams 5. Go follow me on there, and if you do, when you do follow me, turn on those notifications. That way you are aware of when I'll be going live, and of course, follow me on Twitter to where so that, that will be where I uh, post when I'll be going live next. And uh, Joseph, let's send us home. Happy tonight. Yes, sir. Hope you guys have a good night. Stay safe. We'll see you Friday night for the Rampage Review right here on the Big Fight Fuel channel. We out.